Hello friends, uh, thank you for your overwhelming response to the previous videos that I have created on NISM series uh, 19C exam, which is about alternative investment fund managers. Uh, this is another video as part of the same series. This time I am going to take you through chapter 17, which is related to regulatory framework. And I will take you through 10 questions of this chapter which I'm sure will help you prepare for the exam. Uh, these questions have been taken up from the entire chapter. The chapter is very exhaustive. So obviously 10 questions won't serve the purpose. But uh, my idea is to put 10 questions in one video so that you can uh, spend a, a reasonable time to go through this video. And then uh, in future, I'm going, I'm going to put more videos on the same topic, which will help you uh, to work on the same chapter, right? So as I said, we have 10 MCQs. I'm starting with the first MCQ. So AIFs are prohibited from making an invitation to public to subscribe to its units. Is this statement true or false? Well, the same thing you may get in form of uh, some other question, right? Or something else may be added and similar kind of concept check may be done. Well, uh, note that AIFs are indeed prohibited from making an invitation to the public to subscribe to its units, which means you cannot uh, offer an AIF like a mutual fund, okay, or any other fund which is uh, available to the common masses, right? So the answer for this particular question is uh, what I already said, it's true, right? Now the next question is the second one, which of the following is not included in fit and proper, which is a criteria as per se B, uh, which must be fulfilled by uh, you know, uh, the fund managers, right? So as defined in the Schedule 2 of SEBI Intermediaries Regulation 2008. So fit and proper condition applies to not just fund manager, but many other types of intermediaries and participants, right? So which of the four options is not included, which means it's not part of fit and proper. So the first one, integrity, reputation and character. Well, that's definitely the part of it. No history of restraint orders and convictions. Uh, that's also part of it. Financial competence based on net worth and solvency. And the last part is minimum five years of experience in capital market. Well, this has not been included in fit and proper criteria. So the answer is D. The next question, which of the following is a type of a specified alternative investment fund? Uh, please remember that we have AIF1, AIF2 and AIF3. Uh, which means alternative investment fund one, two, and three. This is specified alternative investment fund. So, uh, well, private equity is not part of that. Debt is not part of that. Social impact is not part of that. These are all falling under the category of AIF one, two, three. This corporate debt market development fund is what is a type of specified alternative investment fund. Please remember that a specified alternative investment fund is different from AIF1 to AIF3. The next question is the fourth one. Which of the following is the right description of all possible legal structures of alternative investment fund? So remember that alternative investment funds can only be created as a legal structure, which means as an individual, you cannot start an alternative investment fund. Even as a legal structure, for instance, a, a partnership firm uh, cannot start uh, a, a you know alternative investment fund. So you have the trust, company, limited liability, and body corporate. All four are the different types of legal legal structure under which alternative investment fund can be created. So the answer is D. All of the above, which means one to four. Now remember, this is very important that alternative investment funds can. Being a legal structure can only take these, take these four shapes. It can be either a trust, a company, a limited liability company, or a body corporate. The next question is, at least one key personnel with professional qualification in finance, accountancy, business management, commerce, economics, capital market, or insurance from a university or an institution recognized by central or state government or a foreign university or a CFA charter from CFA or any other qualification as may be specified by the SEBI with respect to, you know, key personnel. Okay. So you have key personals in uh, alternative investment fund, at least one key personnel should be there. Uh, and he should have these 
one of these qualification is this statement true or false well only one thing that i want to highlight here is that insurance is not an acceptable qualification okay uh, insurance will be replaced by banking okay so you must remember this because many times you may get a description of a key personal and you will be asked whether he can hold the position of key personal so this particular statement is not true as far as the key personals are concerned because if a key personal is hired by uh, by an alternative investment fund he should have professional qualification in finance accountancy business management commerce economics capital market or banking not insurance huh? so insurance is excluded so the only these areas are included next question 6 what is the minimum penalty if any fund or person managing alternative investment fund fail to comply with sevi regulations well penalty can be very high but the minimum penalty is only 1 lakh the answer is a so penalty is recurring you know uh, as the day goes on the penalty keeps on getting added so it can be very high but minimum is 1 lakh what should be the minimum tradable lot of a close ended alternative investment fund so when a alternative investment fund is traded what will be the tradable lot uh, you know tradable lot is a very huge value and it is actually uh, a crore rupees right the next question is which of the following is not valid criteria for an individual to be classified as an accredited investor so if you are going to be an accredited investor you have to meet some criteria so there are three options available annual income should be at least 2 crores or the net worth of the individual should be at least 7.5 crore out of which 2 3.75 crore should be in the form of financial assets or annual income should be at least 1 crore and minimum net worth of 5 crore out of which not less than 2.5 crore should be in form of financial assets please remember this statement is incorrect because the amount here is not 7.5 crore it is 5 crore so please do uh you know have in your mind that you may have a question related to this where it may be asked that what is the criteria if you have to become an accredited investor next question the accreditation given by an accreditation agency to an accredited investor obviously shall be valid for a period of at least 2 years validity has different conditions but here in this context it is valid for 2 years from the date of such accreditation if applicant meets all eligibility criteria for the preceding one year right so there would be another condition which could be for 3 years but then the condition uh, is different from what you have seen here the next question is question number 10 large value fund for aggregated investor means an aif or a scheme of an aif in which each investor other than manager sponsor employee or directors of the fund or employees or directors of the manager is an accredited investor and invests not less than 70 crore rupees okay that's the condition here so these were the 10 questions i hope you would find some value in it if you want to share any thought uh, please do put your comments uh, in the comment section uh, i will respond to them uh, at a suitable time uh, if you have liked this video in terms of its content do not forget to subscribe to my channel and also like this video by clicking the like button uh, do not forget to share it with your friends as well thank you